Hi, I'm Laura Welch with the Spay and Neuter Assistance Program, or SNAP. What we do is we provide free and reduced cost spay and neuter surgeries. Our mission is to end the death and suffering of dogs and cats due to overpopulation, especially in low-income areas. So at SNAP, we have a mobile clinic that goes out into low-income areas during the week and we provide free spay and neuter surgeries for dogs and cats of individuals on government assistance. We do about 20 to 25 animals a day. We also have a stationary clinic that's reduced cost spay and neuter where we do between 50 and 60 surgeries a day and it's open to the public. The reason we do this is the more animals we can spay and neuter, the less will die in shelters or on the street. This is our new surgery room. We recently increased from being able to have two surgery tables to having four. So we're very proud of this new facility. It enables us to spay and neuter even more animals. Right now we do between 50 and 60 a day and we're doing surgeries um, five days a week. And we will soon be increasingly doing surgery six days a week. You can spay and neuter your cats and dogs at four months or older. Sometimes it's better, you know, people like to do them younger, it's easier on them. At SNAP, we spay and neuter feral cats every day. People can bring them in after they trap them and um, we will spay and neuter them here and give them the rabies shot. And what they do when they give them the surgery, they also notch their ear just a little bit. So that way when they're out again and somebody traps them, they'll know that animal, that cat has already been spayed or neutered so they don't have to bring them again. At SNAP, we really need your support. Your donation will help us spay and neuter more animals in the Houston community. And by doing that, you're saving lives. We have a program called the Spade Club, and once a month, people give a donation, but that money goes to sponsor a dog or cat to be spayed and neutered that month. So it's a great way to support, knowing that you're making a difference, and that's thousands of animals that you're preventing from being born. If you ever go down to the shelter, it's just, it's heartbreaking to see all these puppies and kittens that just, they don't have a chance. There's just not homes for them and they've done nothing wrong and it's just, it's so easily preventable. And with everyone's help, we can really make a huge difference. So please go to our website, snapus.org. Thank you. Ryan Rice with the Houston Dog Blog, and um, I'm a huge fan of SNAP for many reasons. One of the main things I love is the wellness. I think it's amazing to me that like there's a center like this for everybody to come to for low cost, high quality wellness, quick and easy, first come first serve, you can always get a spot, and it's amazing service at a, a really great price, you know, for the community. And it makes a difference for everybody. I mean, nobody can now say that they can't afford to, you know, like take the normal precautions of wellness with their animals. Um, beyond spaying and neutering, they also need to have their annual vaccines and they also need to have their flea and heartworm preventative and a heartworm test every year. Heartworms are so prevalent in Houston that it's vital. SNAP is such a great tool to help you become a responsible pet owner and make sure that you stay one. Um, it's open seven days a week, first come first serve. If you need to just come in and get your vaccines or your board of tell us so you can board them or groom them or if you need to come in and get your flea and heartworm preventative, it's a great place to do that for a low cost but yet high quality. Brett Chisholm. Um, I'm a volunteer and donor for SNAP. I started an event for them several years ago because SNAP's just really doing uh, what I think is the most important work in, in the Houston animal community because they are uh, getting spay and neuter education out there to the general public, which is where it has to be because without uh, spay and neutering our pets, we really can't combat the uh, animal overpopulation problem. And in addition, SNAP's just really great because they do so much great work for wellness and getting everybody heartworm preventative, which is so important in Houston, especially with the mosquito population that we have. Hi, my name is Dennis Dowdy. I'm 54 years old, a retired photographer, and I've been working for SNAP, the Spay and Neuter Assistance Program, for the past two years. Animals in Houston, so many times people, they love their animals, they take care of them, but yet they do not take that extra step on making sure that they're altered so there's no more reproduction. The shelters are full. Too many animals are euthanized daily that could be wonderful pets in people's loving homes. 
Something that impacted me several years ago that made me even become more aware of why animals need to be spayed or neutered, I was visiting a shelter area where the dogs and cats arrived before they're taken inside to the shelter and there was a huge cage, it was a huge cage, and it was packed full of kittens, tiny kittens, little kittens, every color you could think of. And I looked at a person that was there and I was commenting on, how are you going to find this many fosters to take these kittens? How, how can you get this many people together? There's so many in this one cage. And the person looked at me and said, Dennis, these cats aren't even going to get to go inside. They're going to be euthanized. There's too many. We're packed. And at that moment, I realized it's, it's, it's like there's an animal holocaust going on in this country, and Americans have got to start spaying and neutering their their animals. It's not the shelter's fault. That's pure human error on allowing their animals to reproduce when it's so simple to get a cat or a dog spayed or neutered. If you don't have the funds, there are organizations that will help you. So please, if you can, get your animals spayed and neutered. Thank you. Hi, I'm Dr. Robin Palmer. I'm one of the veterinarians at Spay Neuter Assistance Program in Houston. And for about seven years now, I've been working for this nonprofit, um, mainly focused in the spay and neuter of um, as many dogs and cats as we possibly can. A lot of people are aware of the overpopulation problem, especially in the stray dogs and cats and in all of the animals in the shelters in the area, and that's certainly a very important thing. One thing I've noticed that a lot of people don't think about, we have many clients come in with the best intentions in the world saying they would really like to have just one litter from their dog and cat and then they're going to spay and neuter. Well, what a lot of people don't realize is that there are so many people doing that. It's the drop in the bucket effect. When one person has one litter, that's maybe five or six animals um, getting homes that dogs or cats in the shelter could have had those homes. So in a way you could say that those five or six animals died in the shelter because the homes were taken up by animals bred purposefully. So a lot of people don't think of it that way, and they certainly don't have that intention, but if more and more people would think of only um, adopting pets from rescue organizations, from shelters, taking in strays, that's going to go a long way into helping with this overpopulation problem. A lot of people want their family to see what um, newborn puppies and kittens are like. You can adopt a, or let shelters know that you're willing to take in a pregnant female, a female with brand new puppies and kittens that can't be kept in a shelter environment and that will help. So there's many ways, many different ways to achieve the same purpose. And I think that's something that a lot of people should think about if they have any thoughts of having their dog or cat have puppies or kittens. Thank you. Hi, I'm Karen, and uh, I have a feral cat colony, plus I have cats of my own, and people ask me, how many cats do I have? And I'll go, well, I have three that sleep with me, and then I have maybe 10 or 12 others because the population varies. But one thing that does not vary about the population is that if they come to my house to eat, they have to get fixed. They have to be neutered or spayed, and then if they can, I help them find a forever home, but sometimes they wind up staying here, but then that's okay because well, I'm a forever home too. I have had various feral cats that I have taken up to snap that they have fixed right away because they know that I have tried to trap them to fix them so that they could have a forever home. And I have also used the snap mobile clinic to fix my own cats plus to fix others because I am on a fixed income. And I recommend that you, you know, if you can help any way you can, donations of any kind. You can give money, you can give time, you can give newspapers, you can give cans of food, just anything. If you see people that are trying to help fix cats, please help them because these kitties have a home. It's on the street. It's just not under a roof like we have.